the mountains stand before me the rivers running wild the wind it howls the rain it falls upon this orphan child. Sally's original hunch and the reason for wanting to tell the story at an epic scale was an instinct that it should be the life story and not just the love story, that the character only made sense if you could really feel where the character came from before she met Rochester and how that continuity of her life was was present even during the love story with Rochester. The focus on individual human rights is what really appeals to me about the book. Uh, Jane Eyre really understands the fundamental necessity of needing certain things in order to thrive and, and live a good life. And she understands that from a very early age. I mean, that's what's so appealing about the book now, that we can still relate to women wanting to be allowed to live the life that they want to live. It can appeal to everyone because it's about what we need in order to get the most out of life. Sally felt the title of the book is Jane Eyre, an autobiography. And she, right from the beginning, made it very clear that she thought the childhood should be a really important element. I don't see how you can read Jane Eyre and get to know it and not be pushed over backwards by the strength and force of Jane. That rage she feels, her constant questioning of why she's being subjected to certain kinds of treatment, it felt absolutely imperative to give her that strength. Otherwise, she's just someone that things happen to and she's pushing her life forward at every turn. She's an extraordinarily propulsive character. And um, it has to be said, I think you've brought a lot of yourself into Jane in a good way and I'm, I'm, that's a compliment. Well, bossy! <laughs> well, but there's an awful lot of power and there's an awful lot of kind of, of directness in Jane, which you've got, which I think is a brilliant thing. And that's, and you brought that into the room on day one of rehearsal. We don't have a concrete script to start our rehearsal process off with. What we do have is a very basic skeletal structure, scene, titles, where the interval was going to be and, and how it was going to end. That was what we brought into rehearsals. And from that structure, everything else was born out of that. The thing about devising a show is that you don't know where you're going when you start. You didn't have a script, you didn't have a set. So uh, we started with the novel and then at the end of the six week, eight week rehearsal we had the first time around, we had a show. There is a lot of improvisation, yeah. but, but actually we then returned to the novel and go, actually, do you know what? She's got this really She's right. This, the words here, this, this little couplet of back and forth between the two of them is so perfect. And then, you know, there are bits that are ours. The bits where the real sort of emotional intensity come, the real crunch points, the dialogue we're using is almost, I think, without yeah. exception, Charlotte Bronte's, because yeah. it's, as everyone knows, it's just beautiful and it, it's dramatically brilliant. Have you been making inquiries regarding my future position? I have not been neglecting my duties. You, on the other hand, have. Adele is running rings around Mrs. Fairfax and being a damn nuisance. Go on up to the house. Well, go on. Sir. I think both characters oh. have a kind of sense of damage in their lives. And Rochester certainly has a, a sense of, of darkness and a sense of self-hatred, and which he sort of takes out on the world around him. Um, and that comes across through this very acerbic, very, often very funny, but always in a cutting, in a sharp way. And I think that part of his appeal for Jane is the fact that he forgets that she is from a class different from his. He sees her as an individual that he can begin to spar with 
And I think that's fascinating when he begins to feel that happening between them and, and see that she's not going to be squashed. And that lovely moment. line she has when she says, you know, no, sir, I'm not afraid. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, ooh. Yeah. 